Hi, and welcome to Screens and Focus, the podcast where we dive into your favorite TV shows and movies. I'm Diana, and today we are talking about The Walking Dead, The Ones Who Live, Episode 5, and Renee is here to join me to break it all down. Hi, Renee. How's it going? Hello. I'm doing very well, thanks. How about you? I'm doing really good. I, yeah, just really good start to the week. So I'm excited to talk about this episode. I don't have any feedback of how you're feeling about it, so I can't (laughs) wait to really break it down with you. But of course, I want to start off with our question of the day. And Rick and Michonne, we see them on this road trip, and which was fun, which we'll get into, but it got me to thinking about other road trips. So I want to pose this question to you and all our friends out there. What is your favorite road trip memory from a TV show or movie? Well, the first one that popped into my head because it's semi-related is uh, Norman Reedus had a cameo in the newest like National Lampoon's Vacation movie. It's just titled Vacation. Ed Helms plays a grown-up Rusty Griswold, and it's about his family and, and their trip. But Norman Reedus has a kiss. He shows up several times through the storyline, and it's it's funny. And if you haven't seen it, you should watch it because it's pretty good. <laughs> so. I haven't seen this. And now that <laughs> I know Norman's in it, I'm going to have to watch it. And yes, the and fact that you say it's funny because – I love the original. So sometimes when you love something so much, it's hard to watch mm-hmm. something with somebody else. So the fact that you said it's good, I would, l- I'll, I'll have to tune in and check it out. Yes. Our, my family, we've watched it uh, numerous times, maybe four or five, because we really enjoy it. <laughs> yeah. Well, normally I would always say planes, trains, and automobiles. I love that movie, and I've talked about it about a million times. So I have to come up with something new. (laughs) So (laughs) I'm going to say the first thing that came to my mind, Ooh, but it's actually changing because I was going to say Little Miss Sunshine because Mm -hmm. I love that movie and how dysfunctional everybody is. And just, it's a great movie. So, Mm -hmm. but also the other thing that came to mind was Wild Hogs that, have you seen that with John Travolta, William H. Macy, um, they're on, there's a bunch of them and it's a comedy and they're mm-hmm. all on motorcycles. Yeah. But they're just some guys trying to get away, but they have all these run-ins with all the, these motorcycle clubs and everything. It's hilarious. <laughs> I haven't seen that movie in ages. And it is I know. That's so why I was just trying to recollect because I'm like, I'm pretty sure I have seen it, but it's been quite a while. <laughs> yeah. It's so much fun. Like if it's on, I would just go sit and watch it yeah. <laughs> or I would look for it. So um, that would be fun one to watch. But friends out there, we would love to know what your favorite road trip memory from a TV show or movie is. So please share it with us. You can comment here on YouTube or reach out to us on social media. All of our links are in the show notes and also on our website at screensandfocus.com. All right. So Renee, um, did you have any news to share? I don't think so. I tried to think of some stuff, but there's really not a lot going on, I guess. Did you want to bring up the camp? Because I know you had talked about it. Go ahead. Of course. Yeah. So, yeah, the camp events will take place in Peachtree City again this year, Memorial Day weekend. This will be their fifth year. And so we're very excited. Lots of amazing guests. Seth Gilliam will be there. Pollyanna McIntosh, Lenny James, Josh yeah. McDermott in his first U.S. con since 2018, and a lot of regulars that have come for several years, including Josh Hamilton, Teo Rapp Olson. Oh I'm trying to think of the, all the regulars. You know, there's just so the, the guest lineup this year is, is just incredible, and so yeah, it, it's so much fun. And we always raise money for charity and things. And we have a Camp Cares event that actually takes place on Thursday ahead of it, where we go into Atlanta and serve you know, people who need are in need of, of food, clothing and different things like that. So it's kind of all tied into this big weekend. But you can just go to the camp You can go to their, their Facebook, all the social media to find out all the information. But it's, it's just a very unique convention. It's a lot more intimate than most that you go to, even though there's a lot of people there, but you meet all kinds of people. They have parties every night. I think Friday is like a pool party and then a karaoke party and Saturday is oh, wow. a halfway to Halloween party. They've got tons of special, like they're, they're more intimate little 
events where, you know, maybe 10, 15 people get to be with this actor and do something special. So it's a lot more intimate and, you know, a lot more fun, you know? So yeah, yeah. It's, it's just an incredible event. And yeah, it's just near and dear to my heart. I get to do um, panels with my co-host Ryan from Beauty and the Beast. And then our friends from Relishing the Dead will be joining us this year. And they're going to do a couple panels as well. So yeah. we're always excited about that. <laughs> so much fun. I wish I could go. <laughs> it's I not know. close to me, but yeah. one of these days, hopefully yeah. I can make it there. So, but for anyone that can go, mm -hmm. check it out. They can get to it by, could they get there by your link that we share in the show notes or um, should they just look it up? Currently it's not, if I, re I remember I could add it there, but yeah, just the, the camp events.com is their website and the camp events okay. is all their social media. Yeah. Okay, campevents.com. Mm -mm. Yes, I believe. Let me double check that, but I'm pretty Okay, sure. cuz I will I will try to put that in the show notes just for anybody that yeah, wants to. Yeah, campevents.com. And they also they'll have another event this fall that they're actually doing in Orlando. It's going to be a very different event. It's actually at I think Universal's where it's at and oh. it sounds like it's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah. <laughs> so but it's a very different than what the Georgia event is. So yeah, but that the information for that's on the site as well. Yeah. Oh, so much fun. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, before we get to this episode, I wanted to just quickly bring up uh, the songs that are the songs that we were talking about from the last episode, episode four. I had also brought up that Yvette Nicole Brown was going to sort of be like interviewing Denai um, on because Denai had written episode four. And I had asked I had asked a couple of questions because they asked for people to mm -hmm. ask their questions and they would hopefully talk about them as they were being interviewed. And what happened was it was broken up into three separate little segments. So if you go back to either one of their Instagram feeds, you can get to each of those. And what they happen to answer the questions that I asked. So I don't know if they actually took my questions or other people mm -hmm. on the same questions. But the first one was, why did you pick tie a yellow ribbon around the old oak tree. And I can't, uh, that, so many words, I'm having trouble saying it. And last week I was frustrated with myself because I forgot yellow entirely, but it is tie a yellow ribbon around the old oak tree by Tony Orlando and Dawn. And she had picked it, she said, because it was just the perfect song. She said, because it, to her, it signified changing the tone, the shifts that were happening and kind of like a palette cleanser, I believe mm -hmm. she said. And also it had the yellow theme. She didn't go into what the yellow theme meant, but just me searching, um, it can represent a lot of things, but I feel like it represented in related to The Walking Dead, The Ones Who Live, was that it supports troops and also suicide prevention. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I think um, that is why yellow was significant also in this in that song. So it was kind yeah. of cool to hear the background on that. And I had also asked, I believe, what was the hardest? I don't know how I posed it, but basically, what were there any scenes or parts or whatever that were hard to to write or act in? And she had said that the first two acts were the hardest to write because. Um, there were just, I think a lot of them had to do with her and Rick at odds with each other and how illogical it seemed, but she had to make it logical because this is what he was going through. And so that was hard. Also, it she was writing this as she was filming the other episodes. So, mm -hmm. and then things would change because if things change in the third episode, it would change what happened in the fourth episode. Mm -hmm. So she had said in the third episode, which both you and I had comment on was remember that scene where she takes off his helmet and then she doesn't say a word well she was supposed to talk but mm -hmm. they decided not to have her talk and I thought oh, that was perfect we thought that was just perfect <laughs> and because that happened it changed what happened in her the episode that she wrote episode four so she said it was kind of a dancing act in mm -hmm. doing that. But I just, mm -hmm. again, I just love that whole episode. Did you have any reflection on that episode at all? Did anything change for you or is it basically the same? Well, you know, the more like I talked about it a lot, we it did film or 
recorded with you. And then two days later, I re- did our live feed with yeah. Beauty and the Beast. And so, yeah, I feel like I just, I, I, I don't know that a lot changed. I just, I like, yeah. I, I really just related to Michonne and everything she was experiencing as a wife and a mother and all those things. And yeah, I was just still ticked off at Rick, you know, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> the end, it was like, okay, you know, I mean, I they, you know, but, but it was intended, right. Yeah. It was intended yeah, for you yeah. because she wrote it like that. Yeah. She's yeah. like, you know, this is, mm-hmm. it's going to be hard to get through to you. And yeah, so I, I think that just attests to her writing and his acting. Also, I'm, oh my gosh, they were phenomenal. They both did such a great job. Her acting and writing, and and then it, plus they, you know, in his acting, of course, and then you know they're both executive producers. So then they were yeah. on that side of things as well. It was great. It wasn't that I didn't like the episode. It was just oh, no, yeah, you know, frustration with I, yeah, I like seeing Rick like this, which I've read. No. You know, lots of people were the same way. They're like, this is not someone I read. I can't remember who wrote the article now, but they were like, that was too broken of Rick. That was too, they were like, that was too much, you know, because they just, people don't want to see Rick like that. Right. Uh, And you're right. I don't like it either. I don't like that. He was like that. It bothers me too. Mm -hmm. It really does. I'm like, no, he's (laughs) our hero. Yeah. He's going to show me to be happy. Let's go. Let's go. (laughs) But again, it's real life. Yeah. That it's real life. So yeah, it it, it Um, did. It felt so real. And the reason, okay, we could keep going on. I know. I, we need to move on to the next episode. But all I want to say, finishing that part, was that we know now why he was yeah. like that, which I think was pivotal and great and mm-hmm. wonderful. Not wonderful, but it's understand, we understand yeah. now why um, he was affected in that way. Mm-hmm. It sheds light on um, PTSD. Yeah, that sometimes you just don't think about, right? You just think, oh, yeah, we're over your back now. You're happy or you're together. You should just be happy. Snap yeah. out of it. Mm-hmm. It's like, right. oh, sometimes it takes a longer time to get over something like that. Yeah. Okay, let's move into <laughs> episode five entitled Become. Rick and Michonne are on this cross-country road trip together, honeymooning, (laughs) facing challenges and meeting Jadis. We finally get to see who the crossover is, and we saw themes of faith and forgiveness and survival and sacrifice. So what did you think overall of this episode? I really, really liked this episode. I think a lot of the reason stems from it feeling very walking deadish, you know, we still had that yeah. the ones who live feel with the events, but it, you know, being outside, being in the woods, all these things. Then, you know, of course yeah. the flat, the crossover character being father Gabriel, which I was so shocked. So I was surprised. I was pleased that it was him because it made sense. And I don't know, I, I was going to go back. I had written an article about characters we should see and why. And I was like, Did I, I don't know if I included him. I really don't know that I even, thought about that you know I can't I have to go back and look but I just I love that it was him <laughs> because yeah. I mean I, I I didn't think it was gonna be Morgan I just never did think it was gonna I thought they just wanted to build that up you know and get everyone's yeah. hopes up but it never occurred to me that it would be him <laughs> so I was very glad and I I really did enjoy you know I've, I've read a couple of things about Rick and Michelle, like, oh, they were never this lovey in the main series. They have been apart for over eight years. There's a reason why they are so affectionate and, yeah. you know, intimate and k- hugs and kisses and all these things. They've been apart for a very long time. And so I really enjoyed seeing that and just the little talks they had and things like that. So I just, yeah, I really, really enjoyed this episode. I was surprised also that it was Father Gabriel. And I like that. I like that. I, I, I was trying to guess as we, as we see the feet. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, whose feet are those? And of course, I'm thinking, could it be Morgan? I'm like, mm-hmm. that does not walk like Morgan because nope. Morgan has a distinct mm-hmm. walk. So I knew it wasn't him. And we, I knew it was a man. Yeah. So I, I thought, okay, this isn't Jadis because I had said that, which later on it is Jadis, but mm-hmm. I had said but on a different part, but I had said, I thought this episode Mm -hmm. was going to concentrate on her. And so I'm like, wait, who is this? It was just a crossover person. Yes. Mm -hmm. It was father Gabriel. Yes. I thought it was so perfect without Mm -hmm. even knowing it was going to be perfect. Mm -hmm. 
So I, I can't wait to talk about that with you. And then I think what I really enjoyed about Rick and Michonne was just seeing them be together and fight together seamlessly, especially mm. in that beginning part. I mean, yeah. of course, all the way through. But I feel like there was a rhythm between mm-hmm. them that was working and, mm-hmm. or that you could see and you could see it was evident. It was like riding a bicycle. You get mm-hmm. back on and you you can do it, right? Mm-hmm. So um, so I thought it was really great to see them both together. So was there a highlight or something that stood out to you in this episode? I really enjoyed the the flashback scenes with her and with Jadis and Gabriel because we saw she was very different with him and we learned yeah. we learned more about what she was thinking and feeling and you know there is some guilt there even though she tries to put on this front as a CRM soldier that she just is you know status quo I'm doing what I got to do the kind of thing but you know she does harbor guilt for some of the things that she's done in the past which is doesn't it, it doesn't seem like it seems uncharacteristic of her, I guess. And so I like that she has Gabriel where she feels, even though they've, they had some issues, she felt comfortable discussing that stuff with him. And so I just really enjoyed that. And also the other part, the one other that really stuck out was when Rick said to Michonne, I was lo- in love with my son's best friend. I didn't know what to do. And I was like, that was, it was so sweet because it was like this, I know it was like this poor guy. He's like, Man, I love this gal, but you know, my son just says, Oh, she's my best friend. (laughs) Okay, now that makes it awkward. But I love that. He he just, you know, he said a lot of, they both said a lot of things that it was good to hear, but that I just, that really stuck out to me. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I, it's both of those things also really that stood out to me. I had already said they're seamless uh, Mm -hmm. working together was such a highlight. You know, what was really nice was to see them happy because it was, it's really the, the only time that we're going to really see them happy because we know next episode is going to gear up (laughs) and it's going to be crazy. So I feel like we were able to just see them with no one else around and not worried about anything else and just, it's almost almost like they were camping yeah. with what they were doing. They were on a road trip, an yeah. you know, honest to goodness road trip. It's just they only they had time to spend together. Mm-hmm. And just when she would look at him over in the car and him drinking that soda, just, just <laughs> yeah. little things and how they're sitting there by that little campfire. I'm already getting into it, but they're sitting there by that campfire and the it says Wyoming, whatever it says on the back of the truck. I just yeah. those moments. They were just very nice to see those moments between them. And then, of course, later on, we see them kick some butt. But yeah. And also, you're so right about Jadis and Father Gabriel. And just, I I love flashbacks. Uh, I love narration. I love flashbacks. I just think it tells so much. It can Mm -hmm. tell so much. And I like that it was three years, two years, one year. And that they had had that relationship on The Walking Dead. Mm -hmm. And so it made sense that it was continued here. And that we get to see that Jadis is struggling. This is what um, she is dealing with. So, you know, we got to see Michonne's story. We got to see Rick's story. Then we got to see their, basically their love story. And now we're seeing Jadis's story. And so I love that they're kind of covering these with this, oh, this overall kind of umbrella to each episode about mm-hmm. what that's going to contain. And then all of a sudden it's going to come to this culmination. So that I'm just still not ready for. It's like, I want to see it, but then yeah. I know when it's here, it's going to be over and then I'm mm-hmm. not going to be happy. Yeah. <laughs> this is not going to be out <laughs> anymore. All right. So let's talk a little more about the characters, the relationships, and any of the themes that we saw, like faith, forgiveness, survival, or sacrifice. Yeah. I, you know, I, I read some things about, you know, Gabriel, you know, Gabe and Jadis, you know, they had a, they had a short relationship. You know, it wasn't, we didn't see, well, you know, it was, we didn't see a lot of it. And, but it was interesting how much it impacted both of them. You know, he, we learn that he, um, well, I guess the forgiveness part, she asks him, how do you live not being able 
to get forgiveness from the ones that you made gone, where you, that's where she's harboring that guilt, you know. And so it was showing a vulnerable side that we don't see. We see it from Anne. We don't see that from Warrant Officer Jada Stokes. Yeah. You know? mm-hmm. She's all business. She's all professional. And so it was really, I loved seeing that. And you know, that I just to see her, like, I guess that she just feels that comfortable with him for whatever reason, even though they kind of ended bad because she was going to give him to the CRM when they, you know, before she, you know, wrote that. I mean, that's how they ended. She had him and was like, oh, I thought you were this. I thought you were a B or something like that. And I think that's what she said to him. And then that's when she, then she'd find Rick and used Rick instead, but that wasn't a good ending. <laughs> so yeah, it, it's funny that he, he, then we also learned that he was trying with the help of mm-hmm. Eugene's radio and Rosita trying to find her. And so I thought that was really interesting. And then of course I always love hearing these other characters, even if you just hear their name. It's like, Oh yeah. You I know, know I know. <laughs> <laughs> I really enjoyed that. You know, I just the whole thing between them. And I yeah. felt like that progressed. Like we saw three years, we saw two years, we saw the one year, you know, and I feel like she was, more and more integrated into the CRM. Yeah. By the time, obviously, because then she's like, oh, you're just a, you know, you're just a liability, a loose end. Where at the beginning, she was forgiving him. It just, it, it changed. Every time she came back, she was just more loyal to the CRM. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I was surprised they didn't kill Gabriel because it would have been a lot more, I not that I wanted to die, but this, I just feel like they just don't take any risks anymore, you know, and don't, I mean, where they sacrifice fans feelings over better storyline, you know, but it's just, that's just how I feel, (laughs) you know, not that I really want Gabriel to be dead, but it's just, yeah, (laughs) true. I, well, maybe because it was from a person though, right? Because I think that serves two purposes as you were talking about that made me think one, when she had the gun to his head and earlier she says to uh, uh, Rick and Michonne, basically she had to kill somebody. She says something which makes us think that, oh, she had to kill him, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, So I don't know. She was just pretending like she killed him. I don't know why she said that or if she's talking about somebody else. I thought she was talking about Huck from World War Maybe. Beyond maybe. she was a I, trainer. Because she yeah. trained Lotus and brought her well, up. I, that's who I, I thought she was. <laughs> well, I felt like she was talking initially, or we were supposed to think she was talking about Father Gabriel, mm-hmm. but she probably really was talking about Huck. Mm-hmm. I couldn't even remember her name. I was telling my husband about <laughs> her because I they showed her at the end, and I'm yeah. like, oh, that's her. Mm-hmm. And he's all, who? Who? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know? <laughs> but anyway. Um, so I thought that they were trying to make us feel like she pulled the trigger. Cause why would she say that yeah. right when she has a gun pointed to his head? <laughs> you know that they're meeting once a year. So I feel like they were kind of pushing us, nudging us like, Oh, it could be Gabriel. Yeah. Know. And when that was happening, cause that's what I thought. I thought, please, you can't kill him. You can't kill him. You cannot kill him. And it's not like father Gabriel is one of my favorite uh, survivors, but he did change. He has mm-hmm. changed. And yeah. I actually loved him in this so much more. I mean, I love him, his character so much more, even after seeing him here in mm-hmm. these episodes, because I feel like his words have just had more weight to them. Mm-hmm. I, that's what I was feeling. I don't know if it's just me or him as an actor or what it, what it is, but I kept thinking, you can't kill him. And I thought, you can't kill him because then he's not going to have a good send off. Like, who's going to know he's dead? Who are we going to see react to his death? There's not going to be anyone that's going to know. And so, I don't know. It it would feel like a loose end to me in that Mm -hmm. regard. So, that's why I was thinking, I'm like, I don't think they're going to kill him. Because nobody's going to know. And how is that going to be impactful except for knowing that Jadis did it? And also, I think it served a purpose for her Mm -hmm. realizing who she is. Like, she couldn't do that because she was Anne. (laughs) There there were still remnants of Anne in her. Yeah. Instead of, and I I don't like that name, by the way. It didn't fit her. Not that I don't like the name. It's fine. Mm -hmm. But the name does not fit her at all. Jodas fits her much better. (laughs) Yes, so much better. 
so much better. <laughs> but that relationship between those two was um, was so needed by both of them. And mm-hmm. and I like that Father Gabriel tells her, I like the secret that we have, because of course yeah. you can't tell anybody, mm-hmm. and that, that we keep meeting. And even that kiss that she gave him, and then him pleading with her, you know, come back with me. And she's like, no, 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 I can't, I can't. Of course, she was being vulnerable at that point, mm-hmm. because she let down her guard for a second. And then she's like, oh, no, I can't do this. I've got to stick to the CRM and mm-hmm. what I'm doing there. Yeah. And like you had mentioned, well, Father Gabriel says, I didn't trust you and forgive me because I lost faith in in, in mm-hmm. you. I just, that whole conversation that they have, all the conversations they had were just really impactful. And I felt and, like when he, he was saying things like that, because he's like, they were judging you for things that, you know, you, what whatever kind of, the people change and you know, Rick trusted you because he thought people could change. Yeah. Which, is, you know, like for him, you know, he, he changed, he did some horrible things, you know, and that was one thing too, when he was talking to her about the, the, her group hoarding food and all that stuff. I was like, he's speaking from experience because he once did that, you know, he kept the food at the church. He wouldn't let his parishioners in and all that stuff. So, you know, I thought that was a, you know, nice little tie in there to an act he did way back. Right. Right. And now he feels, you know, her group, is doing on a much larger scale kind of thing. Right. Also, I did like that he brought up Rick those times, like Rick really, Mm -hmm. like you had just said, like, you know, Rick really believed in you Mm -hmm. and believed that you could change. And just a lot of the things that he brought up about even Rick, even about the ring that that was found. He talks about the story of how Rick wanted to get married on the bridge and, but he, but he just couldn't see what Rick saw, which was interesting because even in that season, you still couldn't see it. Um, But Rick could see it. And of course Rick had because of Carl. And I think Carl was just a motivating factor for Rick and Michonne of um, living a certain way or, Mm -hmm. or hope and, and future and all of that. Plus, you know, they had kids, but, or they had Judith, I should say, <laughs> not kids yet. Yeah. But so it was interesting to hear Father Gabriel talk about that and have the ring and give her the ring so that she could keep some faith in who Anne is. And then I, I don't know if I'm getting ahead of myself by saying I love that um, when she gives the ring to Rick and Rick looks shocked, like, how did you get this from, from father Gabriel? So Mm -hmm. I just love all the little tie-ins. Yeah. I I did want to mention those calcified walkers though. I thought that was pretty cool. And I love what Rick, you know, using his hand to bash him so that Michonne could kill him. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. See those two, let's talk about those two because I love it. Right. Mm -hmm. I love all of that everything that they did together, mm-hmm. uh, their bond, their history, their love story. And that when he tells her in the woods, you know, I never let go. I denied it. I pushed mm-hmm. you away, but I just never let go. Mm-hmm. Cause he wants her to know that, mm-hmm. you know, he was still in there. He just yeah. was having trouble getting out. <laughs> yeah. And, and that they still have time to help people that it's still mm-hmm. in their nature when they come upon those people, because there was a time where they weren't going to let that guy with the orange backpack yeah. on in their car <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or anything else. So right. uh, the fact that they stop and are going to give them the noodles, which is hilarious <laughs> later on yeah. when they, after they pull the gun and yeah. he says, Oh, you want to roll this back? Um you know, just say thank you, and they don't, but they should yeah. have. And then the guys all, oh, is it too late to roll this back? But yeah, 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 a little bit. And then Michonne takes back the noodles because they she's noodles. <laughs> yeah, you pulled a gun on us. Yeah, right. which is so funny. Yeah, it's like you know, that, that was hilarious. It was. And, it was. And I love like they're when they were in the store thing and they're talking. It just like casual conversation about the kids where she's kind of filling him in on who his children are now, you know, and I love it. And she's like, just real, like they're us, (laughs) you know, I love how she's just like, matter of fact, like, you know, that's who they are. You know, she's got her little sword and he needs the little machete and, you know, her little ax or whatever it was. And I just thought that was really cute. You know, how it was just like these, this fun little conversation we were privy to between them. Right. You know, and 
the toothpaste bringing, you know, the toothpaste situation, bringing up that and stuff. And yeah, so I, I just, I really enjoyed those little bits of relationshipy things, I guess. Yes. <laughs> Well, I did too. I I was going to I you know noted that down as their conversations about maybe buy that little license plate and maybe picking up the one that's a junior and she says oh he doesn't really go by yeah. that and about her saying there's never a Michonne and yeah. gets that Michelle and t- breaks it off so that he can give it to her it has an M which I think was so sweet yeah. <laughs> the sweetest thing and yeah just so the the toothpaste and then mm-hmm. finding the key and having a place to to sleep and of course he says mm-hmm. oh basically like we're in luck or our luck's going our way and i'm thinking oh and of course no. i'm on pins and needles because i'm thinking this is not going to continue this way we all know that but yeah. you know let's take it for as long as we have it this moment mm-hmm. And then they're drinking whiskey. I'm like, where did they get that whiskey? Yeah. How's their whiskey still left over somewhere? But <laughs> and they're I'm drinking that. <laughs> yeah. And doesn't she say something like, "Ooh, toothpaste, whiskey." Yeah. Like, where is this going? Yeah, yeah. And he, he's like, he's like I'm gotta, working, working with yeah. what I got, or something. Yes, yes. exactly, exactly. <laughs> working with what I got. But then, of course, they go to sleep. Well, yeah. They go to bed, and then when they wake up, they're all cuddled, or not cuddled, but they're sleeping together. And of course, Jadis has to <laughs> interrupt. Um, interrupt them. Yeah, which actually goes into a great segment. I thought when she had them tied up, and I'm thinking, how the heck are they going to get out of this? And then I kept thinking, is Jadis not going to shoot at them? What's going to happen here? Mm-hmm. Uh, but I love their like knowing what to do. Like knowing like she, uh, Michonne's going to go this way and Rick's yeah. going to go that way under the bed and they're going to flip up the mattress and then Michonne's going to get that ax and get her in the side. I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. That was pretty good. And of course she goes running out and they had the big old car chase that was happening. <laughs> I thought it was, you know, I thought, man, that CRM armor isn't very good. If that's, you know, that ax can just slice right. I thought you know, it was more protective as to the point, but I guess not. <laughs> True. Well, I guess not maybe all weapons. You're right, though. It should be, right? It could, should that, be kind of like how the Commonwealth, yeah, how Mercer's outfit was and, yeah. and Daryl's and, and, yeah. and all of theirs. I feel like it was a little bit more um, hard to penetrate, maybe. Mm-hmm. But it looked hard to the stormtroopers outfit. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but yeah, so then she they, they had the car chase mm-hmm. and of course, then they or chased into that warehouse where she corners them again. But I just thought the fight scenes were great in Mm -hmm. in all of this, watching Rick and Michonne work off each other. Mm -hmm. Also, Michonne pretending like she's going to go along with it. And that's when she says that line that we heard, and we're like, what is she talking about? Mm -hmm. What's happening here? But of course, at that moment, she's pretending. But that's what they end up doing anyway, or that's what they're going to end up doing anyway. Yeah. Well, they, because at that point, then Jadis is going to be dead. So they're like, okay, this is what we're going to do. But I love how they're both agreeing to this. And we all know neither one of them are going to keep their, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's not happening. Someone's getting hurt here or worse. Or, you know, obviously it was yeah. Jadis. But yeah, there was, I was just humorous that she's like looking at Rick, like, yeah, this is what's going to happen. And uh, yeah. yeah, I thought, I thought it was weird that, you know, like there's a lot of, moments you're just like how you know how did this happen but like the walkers sneaking up there's they're not quiet so i never understand how they sneak up on people yeah yeah, uh, yeah so i thought that was a little strange i know she's got a story to write but how are they so quiet and <laughs> she didn't hear them that one yeah. you know, coming at her or whatever but i guess she just thought they were all dead not thinking about the dead people that could still turn i guess i don't know <laughs> well i was thinking earlier when they were sleeping how did they not hear her yeah coming up and and opening their door especially if you you're living in an apocalypse it's not like yeah. a regular sleep where you're yeah. not thinking anybody's going to break in right in an apocalypse could have been those people coming back red and his mm-hmm. group or it could have been it could be anything and yeah. i thought but then i thought well they were drinking alcohol so yeah so they were a little <laughs> yeah. passed out maybe they had more than we knew yeah yeah like maybe maybe they're in a little deeper sleep than i than i think that they are in 
Well, that scene made me think of when Jesus snuck in on them. And yeah, it it was very similar, you know. (laughs) I feel like I could see that happening more with Jesus because they're in a house with a bunch of. Yeah. I don't know. That just seemed more plausible to me than this one. Yeah. You'd think they'd kind of be on alert knowing people are, you know. Yeah. I mean, that's why they put the the wire right. thing up in the first right. place. And maybe he thought that was safe enough. Maybe he thought, yeah. okay, if we hear that, then we know that they're close enough. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. But, <laughs> oh, and how she tracked them. I liked how she explained how she yeah. tracked them. Because some of that, I'm glad she said that. Because otherwise, you, you would think they're driving this bright yellow truck. And what I really thought that Jadis would go back and check. Because it's mm-hmm. just too... Mm-hmm. <laughs> Convenient. Convenient, (laughs) yes. That they both died in a helicopter. Yeah, no. No, I don't think so. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) And even later when when Jada says something again, I should have known with you too, I think, Mm -hmm. in that warehouse, she says something to that effect. Like, um, yeah, with you too. Uh, I can't remember exactly, but basically anything's possible. Anything's possible with you too. And I, I should have known that a double, you would double cross a double crosser. Yeah. I thought it was odd. They were throwing the ramen wrappers. Like, why would you throw that and leave a trail? I mean, you were supposed to be dead. Why would you leave any hint of your, you know what I mean? So part was weird, but I did. Yeah. I liked how she explained, Oh, you you got on interstate 90, the, the, the fastest route or the most direct route. to Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It was nice that she explained not just, oh, I just was driving or I was walking or I was doing whatever and I found you guys, you know. Right, like, yeah. Was, she had a, more of a purpose and was finding things that was hinting to her that <laughs> they were definitely alive. Well, I like that she says, isn't it funny how in your memory you remember certain things when when things happen? And that's so true, right? Like mm-hmm. you can remember when pivotal, what you were doing, and it might be minimal or something, when things happen that are um, somehow either monumental or, or something. And then you remember other things that happen. Mm-hmm. So she's saying, oh, so the helicopter, ha- we were coming to the reclamation was happening. And, but I noticed this truck and I noticed this and I noticed that. And then of course you, when they went back again, because she wanted to check and then that yellow truck was gone. It's like, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> that all makes sense. Yeah. But of course, then Michelle walks up with the gun. And like you said, she gets bit by that walker. And now she is dying. And so she kind of reveals some things that like the ring at that Mm -hmm. point. That's when she finally tells Rick about the ring and Father Gabriel. And, And I think at that moment, she finally is. She didn't have to tell them where the the. I'm sorry, the word is, is it dossier? Dossier. Dossier. Okay, thank you. The dossier, where it is. Because she didn't have Mm -hmm. to tell him, but something made her tell him. And of course, that coincides with her not killing Father Gabriel as flashing both um, to both scenes Mm -hmm. here. And with Father Gabriel basically saying, you know, Anne never left. Mm -hmm. And her saying, you know, he gave me the answer that I needed. Mm -hmm. And so, but of course, she... It wants to go out with, um, but you know, go save your family, go do that. But you know, let the CRM still yeah. do their thing. And Michonne's all, heck no, I'm not <laughs> doing that. We'll we'll alert the city what they're doing mm-hmm. when we find out about. And I like how all of that was revealed, right? Because now mm-hmm. we know that Beale was going to give Rick the echelon mm-hmm. briefing, and you know, it's still interesting how she says. I think I'm getting ahead of myself, but it's interesting how she says, this is bigger than you think it is. Mm-hmm. And don't you find that everybody always says that? Like all the big places, oh, like the Commonwealth said mm-hmm. that, basically not the same thing, but yeah, but yeah, you know, how they're doing things and how they have to do it is for humanity and in um, the CRM also with in the world beyond and just other I just feel like this is what they're always saying. And it's Mm -hmm. their, their thought process is always, we have to sacrifice people. Oh, also on the fear of the walking dead. That's what I was Mm -hmm. thinking too. It was happening on fear of the walking Mm -hmm. dead. It's like, oh, we have to sacrifice people to make the whole world work. What? No, (laughs) 
Because one, we're living today. Today, we don't know what'll happen tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Uh, an asteroid could hit, and there is no more humanity, or yeah. you know, whatever it could be. So, I mean, yes, you have to plan for the future, but not at the expense of losing people. Mm-hmm. And you have to live for today and live for the people today. And and human life is so important. You can't just discard and decide who you want, mm-hmm. uh, who can live and who can't live. So, it's just all of these different. Um, Military people in control always have the same mentality. Mm-hmm. But yeah, the Commonwealth, I think, just has the one place. But yes, yes, the CRM has. You know, they have multiple yeah. satellite places. I don't know how big. Well, we know Omaha's gone. We know Campus Colony's gone. Portland's still there, yeah. but um, or as far as we know. But yeah, so yeah, they they actually. They say they say that they're big, but they are a lot bigger than anything else. They're the biggest so far, I guess, is what yeah, yeah, you know. But um, but yeah, it is weird. Yeah, you know, that it's always let's we got to kill these people, <laughs> and and the weirdest thing about it is they've been doing this since the beginning because Okafor confirmed we killed. He was supposed to drop yeah. more bombs and whatever it was, and then he didn't do that, but they've been doing this and it hasn't worked. <laughs> so right. why do yeah. you still think this is going to continue? You know, like, okay, we got to kill this massive amount of people to save this many people. It hasn't worked since the outbreak because you've been doing it. I don't understand why they, why they think it will work after so many failed times they've done it. I just, I'm just really curious. I'll be really curious when we get there to know if it really is something big and huge, or is it just something they think is big and huge? Mm -hmm. Just like in Fear the Walking Dead, how they made this, these big claims, like they were going to change everything. They were going to do this. (laughs) And it's like, no, it was all in your head, not in your head. I mean, sure, they were going through the motions, but really how big it was, was just in your head. And they thought that they were going to save humanity also. Mm -hmm. Um, so I'm really curious to know, okay, I know, yes, like you had just said, the, the, this is the biggest entity that we're dealing with now. So is something really going to happen? Are they paired up with other countries that we don't know about? What could it be? Do they have Mm -hmm. what they think might be a cure and it's only going to help so many people? I don't know. I, I have no idea what, where they're going and how big the scope is that Jadis has, drink the Kool-Aid and mm-hmm. think that is that this is it. And this mm-hmm. and oh, I do like that she talks about how she lost so many people and loved mm-hmm. ones and communities and how finally she feels like she's a part of something. And that is part of why she is so committed to this because she wants it to work. And of course, um it, you know, there's so many people backing this. She's thinking, oh, this, this community can work. This can mm-hmm. work. And I'm a part of it. And I'm making this change. But at what expense? Yeah. At what expense? Because I, you did have... Go ahead. I read in an interview with Pollyanna McIntosh that she said that Jadis was tired of losing. And she feels safe in the CRM. She, feel, you know, she feels that safety. She feels protected where before she just never did because it was always dependent on somebody else i guess she's still dependent but anyways it was very interesting that you know she made that comment that that she's tired of losing and needed to find a place to feel safe and that's what the crm does for her that could be true i mean of course she's Mm -hmm. the actress saying that but i'm thinking how does it play in then her relationship with father gabriel Mm -hmm. because i feel like she was vulnerable with him to a certain extent And truthful with him to a certain extent and cared for him. Mm-hmm. I mean, she's the one who initiated kissing him. So mm-hmm. she c- cares for him. And then also her saying to Rick and Michonne, I wish I had died an artist mm-hmm. because that's living in truth. So to me, that means that she probably really doesn't like what she has done with the CRM. That mm-hmm. really, even though she was going through the motions, it might have made her feel safe. But it really wasn't truly who she was because it weighed on her for so long. It, I mean, all those years, at least those three years. And then as she was talking, all those flashbacks of all the people that mm-hmm. um, the relationships that she had, like with Father Gabriel and Huck and everyone else. But 
I do want to say I did feel sorry for Father Gabriel on the last meeting. Uh, yeah. He doesn't show up. And he basically, and it's funny because the one before he says, well, I'll see you again if I'm still alive. Yeah. And now it's, he's alive and she's mm-hmm. not. And then that little A uh, marker that's in the rocks, which was a nice sentiment, right? Because he's like, okay, she's gone. Mm-hmm. Let me leave this for her. As you know, it zooms up and we yeah. see a helicopter and a fire in the distance. All right. I did want to bring up Tony Bennett's song, The Good Life, that played in the very mm-hmm. beginning, which is, I kind of chuckled. I'm like, why is this song playing? <laughs> I love the song because yeah. Tony Bennett is amazing. But I don't know that I really knew the words to the song. But mm-hmm. as I listened to it and looked up the lyrics, it kind of didn't pertain to Ricky Michonne so much that I could see, which I thought mm-hmm. was interesting, unless it was just the term, the good life, that yeah. they were living that moment at the good life until reality hits them. I don't know. But I kind of felt like it it could have resonated w- more with Jadis's character mm-hmm. and character, just because it was talking about being honest and kind of living this facade mm-hmm. and and, you know, just thinking you're happy, but you're not really happy because mm-hmm. you're not allowing yourself. And that's probably what it is now that as I'm talking through it, it really applies to Jadis. <laughs> it's just that they were playing it for yeah. them, you know, during Rick and Michonne's time. And that those ramen noodles were called Tasteful n- n- Nudes. That was, Tasteful yeah, nudes. that's funny. That's a great name. <laughs> 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 oh my gosh, we didn't even talk about, because I'm going to bring up also how Michonne kept saying, protect the people from the people. How she mm-hmm. kept just kept saying like, this is, you know, something sounds familiar or something we should take notice of. But also the moment where Rick at the end, after she dies, Rick goes and I don't know, is it a proposal? Is it a cer- ceremony? I, I think it was that? a proposal that turned into a ceremony i you know that was their (laughs) whole thing (laughs) yeah oh my gosh so sweet i felt like it was totally genuine especially michonne's reaction to it her saying i could have never imagined i felt like she was really saying that right like Mm -hmm. i could never have imagined that this was where we would be in this time in our lives acting as a shown again and that you're here proposing to me and and rick saying that you know that he'll love her till his dying breath which i did not like him saying that by the way i mean i love that he said it but in an apocalypse (laughs) yes yes i did not like the foreshadowing of that of those words and as we as we um go into the next episode. I'll bring up some more. So let's get to our favorite moment. So we are at our segment and the award goes to, so Renee, I would love to know what was your favorite quote, your favorite character or your favorite moment? It it sounds morbid, but Jadis's death, the whole, that I just loved, I guess, just because it was the last we'll see of Jadis and and Pollyanna, she did such a wonderful job in that, you know, just, reminisce you know like i love the flashbacks in her mind of all those people that she lost and how she did it the whole thing i just thought it was so great like sure she gives them the information they need so that they can go home and they can go be with their children but she still keeps her loyalty to the crm for whatever <laughs> you know we can't have quite it's difficult you know to see Anne over here and then to see jadis over here and but till she died, I mean, she keeps that loyalty to them and, and and begs them not to do anything. But of course, they're going to. But, you know, I just I don't know. I just think it was a great way to um, to end the character and everything. I just I just thought it was very well done. I wanted to bring up about her character, how I, I'm really glad they did do an episode with her and Father Gabriel, but also to to pay respects to her, Polly Anna McIntosh, because she had two names, she had multiple haircuts, <laughs> and she was on different shows, mm-hmm. all in Three. the universe. Yeah. yeah. She had so, a significant role. Yeah. I mean, like she was significant in all three of those roles. It wasn't just a cameo. Yes, exactly. So mm-hmm. yeah, the fact that all of that 
with this character must have been so much fun to mm-hmm. play in you know, the different series and just play with these haircuts and mm-hmm. have two names and everything else. I mean, and she did it so good. So yeah, yeah. I love that you picked her in that moment. Mm-hmm. But mine is something that you had mentioned earlier. And it is one Rick says, I was in love with my son's best friend. I thought, <laughs> oh, man. I know. I think because It brings, again, Carl into the mix, Mm -hmm. right? And they're reestablishing best buddies. They really cared about each other. Mm -hmm. And the fact that they were friends before he fell in love with her. So that is true. Yeah. And just that whole toothpaste thing and the M Mm -hmm. that he gave her, the proposal. Okay, all the mushy stuff. I love it all. It's Mm -hmm. so good. If something doesn't make me cry, if... (laughs) If something makes me mushy (laughs) or I feel the love in all of it, that is my favorite part. So yeah, I just love that, that line. It was so great. All right. So now, now that we've given our favorite moments, I want to know what you think is going to happen in the finale. Do you have any, I know we don't know, but no, we don't, we we can speculate. I honestly, this, this series has been so good because Most of the time, I'm like, I don't know what's happening next. (laughs) I mean, it's just that, you know, especially this, you know, this whole Gabriel thing. Who thought? I mean, I I don't, I haven't seen one person say, oh, that did cross my mind that it might be him. No, I, you know, I haven't seen anyone say that, you know, because it just wasn't, I guess because they ended badly, you know what I mean? Like it was, I was like, well, why would they look for each other? So I, I don't know. But anyway, I just like, I've been, I've said this since before the series aired. I, I feel like something's happened to Michonne. And I don't want that to happen. <laughs> I know you're kind of worried about it for Rick, yeah. but I still feel like it's going to be something's going to happen to Michelle. Well, you know, and maybe she won't be killed or something, but I feel like something is going to happen. Happen to I, I don't know what, but I just have this feeling about it, you know. And I'm probably wrong. I hope I'm wrong, <laughs> but you know, obviously they're not going to head back to Alexandria. They're going to head back to the CRM. But are they going to make it? It's just too hard to know what's what. They're still, I guess, I don't know exactly where they were when she, when Jadis found them. I don't know if it said, but we we watched some of their travel as they went. They were in Wyoming. That that sign said Wyoming at one point, and then the the visitor center that they were in. I is that is that a geyser? You know, so we can kind of yeah. get them kind of there. But they've got a long way to go. Still, it's still. I mean, I, I mapped it, and it's like takes 43 hours to drive that or something it's a long it's a long drive i just i really don't know what's going to happen i think i think they will get back to the crm though because i feel like beal and thorn that they got to get some more in here before the end so whether it'll be in at back in philadelphia or not i don't know or if they'll meet on the road or something so but i think we didn't didn't the trailer show rick in a He's back in the soldier uniform, which he doesn't yeah, have. Yeah, they to- show them walking in and yeah, all of so. that. Them there. We know they're there, but you're right about the timing. Now, I was trying to map how far, because I did pull it up on, on maps too, because <laughs> I was curious where they were at. And how long it took them to get to, not how long it took them, but the distance to Wyoming and then mm-hmm. how far to Virginia and also to uh, Pennsylvania. I was just looking at it all. Yeah. So, but you're right. Like how long is it going to take them to get back there? And if the briefings were going to, or the summit was going to be in like a couple of days from way Mm -hmm. back when. So, and it's taken them this long to get where they're at. So I don't know how that whole time span is happening. One other thing I wanted to bring up from before, sorry, this is back on the episode was that I was so curious in trying to align the three years, two years, one years, one year with what was happening in The Walking Dead. Mm -hmm. And so because when he says, oh, our walls have been compromised and the group, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, who is that? What is that? Oh, it's the whispers, you know? And so my Mm -hmm. mind was like, who are they talking about? What's happening in The Walking Dead? So, I mean, it's great that Father Gabriel was actually talking about what was happening and and, oh, about Michelle when he's when Jadis asks, oh, his wife, and then that's when he says, oh, well, it really wasn't his wife officially, but um, she's off help, you know, whatever he said, helping people. Of course, this is before I think Michonne got there. 
I don't know. Maybe it is. I, it's hard to know. See, that's why I, I need a map. I need the, the dates yeah. and everything to know where everything is at. But um, what, what I want to say or what I'm expecting for the next episode. So you're worried about Michonne and I'm worried about Rick a lot, like mm -hmm. a lot, a lot, because I feel like there's so much foreshadowing, like the license plate saying junior and, oh, should I bring this home to him? I'm like, why are you not going to see him and you're going to give it to Michonne to give to your son? And, and then the fact that he proposes to her and says, you know, I'm giving, you know, you are my love, you know, you're, until my dying breath. Why are you going <laughs> to die? I just, all these things, in my, like every time he says something, every time they're together, Every time a song comes on, I, the, I uh, my mind goes, oh, my God, is Rick not going to make it? Oh, the part about the brave man, about mm -hmm. him being the brave man. And I'm thinking, oh, my God, is the brave man going to be the brave man again and yep. sacrifice himself? And he's never going to get home. I will just die. I'll be gutted. And I'm putting it out here. I will be gutted if Rick <laughs> dies. I will. And it was funny because I was panicking when I watched this. And remember I told you last week, my friend had told me, okay, you're really invested in these <laughs> characters. I'm like, yeah. Yeah. My, hus my husband's all, you know, this is a television show. I'm aware. <laughs> I'm like, oh my God. Does my husband and my friends not really know who I am? You know, I Have live met? <laughs> for these characters. Okay. But because I am, I'm panicked mm -hmm. and I say it and I feel it. And Oh gosh. So I just really hope that maybe they will like get, I mean, I don't want them to get hurt, but I would, I would take them getting like a little bit hurt mm -hmm. <laughs> as yeah. long as they, they can be intact and leave together because it would just be such a dream to, to have him go home to his family and to know I don't know. Just, I would love to see them embrace. I don't know if we'll get mm -hmm. even to that, but even a radio call to hear their voice. I don't know, something. I need it. I need it. I need it. I want it. I hope, but I don't know that they'll do it. And it made me think that I read somewhere that, um, and I, I don't think this was like a spoiler. I think it might've been in the trailers or something about Michonne and Rick using the gas finding the gas and using the gas maybe to get rid of the CRM. Mm -hmm. I don't know, but I think we'll learn a lot more when we learn about this echelon briefing. And if it really does, um, you know, Frick does get his hands on it, his eyes on it, and then we'll know what, what, what all of it really means. So I'm, I'm excited, but I'm scared too. Yeah. All right. Is that it? Are we good on this episode? <laughs> I think so. We'll, yeah. We'll know more next week. <laughs> All right. Well, Renee, I'm so glad you're on this ride with me because I, I need you. I need you. You're the only one who understands, apparently. All right. So that is our wrap up of episode five and come back next week for the finale where we are going to break it down. Okay, we are going to switch gears and I'm going to ask Renee if she has any TV or movie recommendations this week. So I just haven't watched a lot of new stuff this week, mostly just little bits of old shows I've rewatched a thousand times. But I did, I'm trying, I want to watch the next Ghostbusters, The Frozen Empire. So I watched The Afterlife again so that I could be prepared for it because I really enjoyed that. I know a lot of people are like, oh, whatever, but I thought it was very good. So I'm excited for the next one that hopefully we're going to see this week sometime. So that was really the only thing new. Everything else has been, you know, How I Met Your Mother rerun or, you know, I've been watching that through for the seventh time or something. But yeah, just haven't had a lot of new stuff. But yeah, but I'm excited about Ghostbusters. So we'll see. <laughs> I might be watching it too, Renee. We might have to talk <laughs> about it. <laughs> we'll that would see. Be awesome. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, so I'm excited to see it. And it's funny because my husband said, oh, Afterlife is on. So, and we had seen it back at the theaters. Yeah. Now, mm -hmm. to be honest, I liked it. I didn't love it. Mm -hmm. Because for me, it was missing the big town aspect, which of course, mm -hmm. they're back at New York. Back, yeah. So I'm going to like that. And the mm -hmm. fact that 
a cameos more yeah. ca- or not more than cameos is going to happen. Yeah. So I'm I'm excited. So I I do want to see that, and so mm-hmm. I think I might be seeing that also. Okay, I'm going to get through this. Just give you guys all my TV and movie recommendations. I started Palm Royale, which is on Apple TV. This is the one with Kristen Wiig, Carol Burnett, Laura Dern, Leslie Bibb. Ricky Martin. I know. Can you believe that? Ricky Martin. It's set in 1969 and it it was filmed in Los Angeles. I saw Leslie Bibb on the Today Show and she said, because you know, movies aren't filmed there anymore. First, they were always filmed there. Mm -hmm. Now that's too expensive. So people go all other places to film things. Mm -hmm. This is actually set there and a lot of, I think they probably use iconic venues to do that. Mm -hmm. But the uh, costumes are so cool and just getting that 1969 vibe. I do want to say, though, when I watched the first episode, I wasn't sucked in. I mm. thought, oh, it's it's poised as a comedy, but it's not hysterical comedy. It's more of a, a dark comedy because what it is is Kristen Wiig plays this woman who is married. Josh Lucas is in it. She's married to him and his aunt is Kara Burnett, who's super rich. And what happens is she's trying to get her foot in the door of this, um, you know, club cabana, you know, how they get into that society stuff, but people don't want to let you in because they're snobby and this and that. So that's what that is all about. And, but what I do, the second and third episode, I started to like it more because I, I just paid attention to a little bit more of, um, I don't know, the characters, Mm -hmm. just learning a little bit more about the characters. So I'm okay with that. I'm going to keep watching it. So um, yeah, I was really looking forward to it because Cara Burnett is in it. Mm -hmm. But right now she's in a coma, but she's (laughs) supposed to come out of it. So we'll see. But, uh, you know, I did first episode of that. Now that you say that, I I did watch that. So I did watch the first episode. (laughs) Uh, Yeah. And what did you think? Was it a little slow for you at first? It was a little slow. And I'm yeah. one of those people, if it doesn't catch me right away, but yeah, now that you've said that, I'll go ahead, I'll, I'll continue and see what I think. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it's interesting where it'll go. I started to watch three body parts on Netflix. Ooh, it's created by the makers of Game of Thrones. So, mm-hmm. and it's based on the, the Chinese novel. And I believe this is the second live action um, series on this. I am going to say it is science fiction has to do with the stuff that I am not good with. (laughs) I, I'm going to keep watching it. It's supposed to be really good right now. It's a, it's a little bit, um, cerebral for me. And so I'm going to see how it goes. Because I love Game of Thrones, and I'm thinking if they put their money on this, then I want to check it out. But I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I I think it's supposed to be really done. I'm not saying it's not good. I'm Mm -hmm. just wondering if it's for me. Mm -hmm. So, but I am going to continue to watch that. Mm -hmm. I am watching Top Chef Wisconsin. I'm a Top Chef fan. I love it. It's great. Padma's gone, and uh, one of the Oh my gosh, I can't remember her name right now, but she was a Top Chef winner and she has stepped in for her. And I love actually really like her a lot. So mm-hmm. as a chef, I really liked her a lot, but we'll see how she does as a host. So it's good. I love Top Chef. Mm-hmm. And then I watched Roadhouse 2024. It's on Prime. I am going to say I wasn't sure how I was going to feel about this. I'm like, Patrick Swayze? Come on. Yeah. How are you going to step into <laughs> those shoes? Even though Roadhouse itself was not my favorite of his. Yeah. It's still Patrick Swayze. Okay. Mm -hmm. And yeah. (laughs) But Jake Gyllenhaal in this, it felt like a different movie. So I was happy. I was happy about that because I didn't want them to revamp the Mm -hmm. same movie. So he stars as an ex UFC fighter, Elwood Dalton, and becomes the head bouncer at this in this rowdy Florida roadhouse. I believe it's in the keys, but they call it um they call it something keys, and I can't think of the name right now, but he befriends Charlie, a teen who runs a bookstore with her dad. And oh my god, Jake Gyllenhaal's physicality in this. <laughs> He's got muscles on muscles. I'm like, holy crap. And I was reading how he trained like 
major that trained for this. And then I wondered how he was going to hold up as a, you know, as this UFC fighter. And he does pretty good. I, I, I was really impressed with that. Now, is it like this major great movie? No, but if you just want something entertaining and you like some action and you kind of miss those movies where, you know, that are that theme, then you will like this. And I do want to mention Jessica Williams, who is in um, Shrinking, is in this. And I like her. She's the bar owner. Connor McGregor is in his feature debut here. And J.D. Pardo from Mayans. I love him from Mayans. He plays a jerky biker. And I'm like, no, no, no. (laughs) But he she does a pretty good job playing this jerky writer, but he's just so not, not like a cool dude. Like he mm-hmm. is lions. And also Kevin Carroll is in this. He oh, plays wow. Virgil in the walking dead with Michonne. So I saw his face. I'm like, oh, that's Virgil. <laughs> I looked it up to double check myself. It was Virgil. So I love that we were able to, or I was able to give a shout out to a walking dead. Yeah. So that was fun. Anyway, so check out those movies and also let us know what you are watching because we would love to know. And if you have any recommendations or feedback, we do have a Google voicemail at 669-223-8542. That number is in our show notes. You can also get to all of our social media and that phone number at our website at screensinfocus.com. All right. Thank you, Renee, for joining me today. Thank you for having me, of course. This is the highlight of my week to talk about this. And <laughs> but like you said, Thanks. with someone who's passionate about it. <laughs> yes. yes, exactly. Who gets it. Who yes. understands it all. So thank you so much. And thank you, all of you, for tuning in. We are grateful you tuned in. And we hope something we said today resonated with you, gave you a chuckle, some happiness, some positivity or inspiration. Don't forget to subscribe to our website at screensandfocus.com because we would love more members of our TV club. You can find our website in the show notes. And remember to keep watching, keep exploring, and keep those screens in focus. And we will see you next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.